the rest of you, hey, let's turn in our Bibles, if you would, uh, to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3, by way of introduction again, and uh, just by a little bit of a warm-up, uh, let me give you just a few warnings that the Bible gives us. I believe it's important for the teaching as we uh, clear up the confusion uh, and rightly divide the Word of God concerning uh, faith or apostolic healers and what all that means. And, uh, and so, if you would, look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, look at verses 13 through 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 13 through 16. I'll wait for you to get there. All right. Hopefully you have a handout tonight. This will be helpful to you. Uh, we will put the caboose on this tonight. We will wrap it up. And, uh, and then I'll go in a different direction, a little bit of a different direction, uh, next uh, Wednesday night uh, for our, uh, another series. Okay? Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 13 through 16. If you're there, say amen. The Bible says, But evil man and seducer shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, All scripture, it won't say all, is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. For doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Would you go back to verse 13? But evil men and seducers shall works worse, shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Would you look up here, folks? May I encourage you this? that there is a warning that Paul is giving, did in his day, he's doing it today, uh, for those that are in the body of Christ, uh, for the church age today, and that is, do not be deceived. Men shall works, wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. How many of you know and would agree it's easy to be duped? Raise your hand. It is. It's easy to be tricked. And uh, there are certain ways that people are doing that, and they manipulate God's Word. And I'm going to tell you why. It's not believe, because I believe people are so gullible or that Christians are weak. I believe that people are just looking for hope. I think people are just looking for something uh, helpful and hopeful and, 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 and miraculous and, 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 and helpful in their life. And when someone brings it across the page that just fits the bill, it's hard not to bite. And, uh, and so Paul gives us a warning, and that's why we're in this series. But look at 2 Timothy chapter 4. Shouldn't have to go far. And look at verses 3 and 4. The Bible says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. The Bible says endure means to put up with sound teaching. That word doctrine means teaching. But after their own lust, after their own benefit for what they want, they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, always those individuals who will say the right thing to make you feel good about yourself. Verse 4, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. The truth is tonight that there are individuals who will be glad to tell you what you want to hear and not tell you what you need to hear. Amen? Amen. I feel like I'm falling apart, had foot problems, now I'm wearing gla glasses to read. And, uh, and so don't feel sorry for me. Uh, but uh, so just so you can get it out of your way, go ahead and everybody look up here. Yeah, all right, you got it out of your way. Everyone's looking. I only need them to read, uh, and I'm too vain to buy a big print Bible. And, uh, and so uh, I need a little help, and I don't mind getting a little help. And uh, so thank God for CVS Pharmacy, amen, where you can go buy some cheap dollar glasses, and you're good to go. Thank the Lord for cheap stuff. But uh, I'm telling you tonight that there are individuals, by the way, who will nip manipulate you to get everything out of you, every dime out of you, and only to forsake you from uh, or abandon, have you abandon the truth of God's Word. Folks, that's why I harp so much that it's important for us to rightly divide God's Word. You cannot take on face value, listen to me, what an individual says. You must be in God's Word yourself to make sure that what they're telling you is true. Anybody can tell you anything they want to say. And by the way, I can make Scripture say anything I want it to say if I take it out of context. 
But if we stick to the context, and if we digest the words, and if we define the words, and if we study God's Word, as the Bible tells us to do in 2 Timothy uh, 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, look at it, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Folks, if you want to rightly divide the word of truth, which means to cut straight, it means to dissect correctly, you must study. Everyone say study. Oh, it's a dirty word in the church. Study. In a church where there is so much entertainment, in a church, a world where religion has come to the forefront, Christ has taken a back seat, sin is not uh, preached against, and where people are told things about themselves to make themselves feel good, I'm still reminded that a good old nose stuck in the Bible to study the Bible will help you err from the truth. And so it's important. And so, uh, by way of continuing to study this series, if you'd look at your handout uh, for tonight, uh, we have discussed that a true apostle of Christ has two primary characteristics. It should be in your handout, and uh, it's already filled in. You shouldn't have to do too much tonight. And that is, they have actually seen the resurrected Christ physically after his resurrection from the dead. We know that the second characteristic is that they demonstrated the validity of their apostleship through the manifestation of miraculous signs and wonders. Look up here. If someone is going to claim to be an apostle, check this. They need two of these things under their belt. They need to be able to work this out and to define these things and say, Yep, I'm an apostle because I've seen the resurrected Christ. How many have seen them? Show it. Universal sign. Today. Okay. Now in the Bible, yes. There were well over 500 witnesses. But today, zero. Well, that's one strike. But then the other one is that they are able to validate their apostleship by miraculous signs and wonders. All right? So it seems that today that a lot of people on TV and the big mainstream media has uh, the uh, ability or to purport uh, that they have the apostolic gift of healing. And that is just not true. So uh, by quick review, look at number one. First, Jesus, if you're going to have uh, the apostolic gift of healing, let's first realize that Jesus and the apostles went where the sick people were. Amen, church? We've discussed that in detail. Number two, Jesus and the apostles, look at this, heal instantly. They healed instantly. Everyone say instantly. That's good. If I'm talking fast, that's okay. I'm pretty wired up. All right? Number three, Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm trying to slow down. I just can't. Jesus and the apostles healed. Listen, you think I'm talking fast. My mind is about 10 pages ahead, all right? And uh, so I'm trying to slow down. I, it's something I have to work on. But uh, Jesus and the apostles healed. Would you answer it for me? Okay, so by way of review, because I feel like I am going too fast, and I probably need to slow down. And uh, first thing is they went where the sick people were. Secondly, Jesus and the apostles healed. Yes. Third, Jesus and the apostles healed. That's right. There were no lying symptoms. Remember me telling you about that? Those that are in the medical field, those that understand this, realize that oftentimes there are people who say, well, you know, well, I, I, got a, I still got a little cough, still got a little sniffle. And those that believe that they have apostolic healing or are faith healers will say, no, that's just a lying symptom. You have been healed. No, my friend, if you are healed by Jesus, there is no sniffles, okay? You don't need an antihistamine. You don't need uh, anything. You, you are healed totally. And, uh, and, of course, I gave you some examples all through this over the last few weeks, and I don't want to go back and review that. If you need that, you can get that online. You can watch this on video as we're updating this and doing our best we can to make sure God's Word is spread in a manner where people can get in God's Word and grow and become self feeding Christians. Number four, Jesus and the apostles healed, would you say it? They sure did. Now, let's look at a few verses just to get back in the text here and make sure that we're right. Acts chapter 28. Acts chapter 28. The book of Acts chapter 28. <clears throat> and let's look at verses 7 and 9. 7 through 9. All right? 
we'll look at a few verses here, and then because uh, uh, we basically left off here just a little bit, and then we'll get right to it. We have time, and uh, we'll be fine. Acts chapter 28, verses 7 through 9. All right? Acts chapter 28. Are you there? Okay, put on your glasses with me, and let's look at it. All right? In the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us. That's an odd name, isn't it? And lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, others also which had diseases in the island came and were healed. Did you notice, man? More people came, and everyone got healed. No one went home without their healing. Look at Acts chapter 5. And uh, shouldn't have to go too far, Acts chapter 5. And uh, let's look at uh, verse 15. By the way, all these references are in your handout. Acts chapter 5, verse 15 through 16. All right, Acts chapter 5, verse 15 through 16. Insomuch they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, uh, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the uh, cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every few. Is that what it said? No, it says every what? Everyone. So when Jesus and the apostles healed, they healed how many? They got them all. Isn't that good? I'd like somebody to come and grow me an extension on my finger. You can't do that. We're going to talk about that. When Jesus and the apostles healed, they didn't leave anything undone. Everything got healed. Quite contrary to today's uh, apostolic healing. Wouldn't you agree with that? Say amen. Nothing, I'm going to tell you, nothing that you see on TV today, nothing that you hear on the mainstream media or see lines up with anything that we have taught and studied so far. None of it. If none of it has lined up, then somebody is lying. Right? We can't all be right. But we all can be wrong. But we all can't be right. So that means we've got to look at the Scriptures, and I believe it's important for us to dissect the Scriptures as we're doing and to put them to the biblical test as we are. Listen, obviously, folks, when, when, when they came to be healed, as people want to be healed today, listen, there is no doubt that when people come to be healed today and go to these tent meetings and go to these things, listen, there is no doubt that those people's faith wants to be healed. They want to be healed. I don't know anybody that says, nah, I don't want it. Nah, not for me. I like cancer. No, I like uh, melanoma. Oh, I like this. Or I like eyes uh, problems. I like not being able to walk. I like this. No, no one would say that. Everyone that wants healing comes in faith. But it's easy to just discount when the healings don't happen and be able to write people off and go, you didn't have enough. Seriously? The Bible says it only takes the faith of a mustard seed to move them out. Now, I haven't seen any mountains move today. God ain't moving mountains today. That's not what he's after. God is interested in changing hearts today and uh, not working through signs and wonders. But the truth is, the principle there behind that is that, have you ever seen a mustard seed? It is about the size, it's smaller than a grain of rice. It's about half, maybe a quarter of a grain of rice. Even if I brought it here to show you, you couldn't see it anyway. And, and But it is tiny. It's about a, it's like the head of a pencil lead. And Jesus makes an astounding statement, says, you have that faith, that's all you need. I'm thinking, then why do others come and, and, and downplay other people's faith or mock them or ridicule them when they don't get what they came 
to receive after what was promoted and promised. I'll tell you why. They have to have a backup plan when the program doesn't work. Better have an escape clause. Better have a back door to that. Because when it fails and when the water strainer or the strainer doesn't hold water, we have a big problem. Well, you didn't exercise enough faith. Well, your faith wasn't whole. You doubted God. I don't know a Christian who hasn't doubted God. I don't know a believer who has at one point questioned what God is doing. If you are or haven't, I'd like to talk to you after the service. But I don't know a Christian who hasn't waned in their Bible study at one point in time, who hasn't waned in their prayer time at one time, who's always said the right thing, who's always been graceful, who always has been uh, compassionate, who's always been perfect. I don't know that human being, but I know who Jesus is. And he's the perfect and righteous king. And without him, we are all men most miserable, the Bible says. I'm just telling you, that in your handout, unlike healers today, they did not leave long lines of disappointed people who had to return home in their wheelchairs. Jesus and the apostles in the Bible didn't end their healing service to catch a jet or because the TV time expired and they didn't have enough money uh, to run the rest of the show. There was a man who writes a book, and I, I said I'd say something about it, but I don't want to spend a whole lot of time about it. His name's William Nolan. He's a medical doctor. He wrote a book. If you like to read, I encourage you. Uh, I'll also rec recommend a book Sunday night to you that I'd like for you to get in your library. And by the way, I believe you ought to be a reader. As a Christian, I believe you ought to read good books, the right books. But this guy wrote a book. It's called Healing, A Doctor in Search of a Miracle. And his name is William Nolan. You can get it on the internet. You can see that it's quickly. You can find his books. It's easy to obtain. He attended uh, a, a seminar or a healing thing of Catherine uh, Kuhlman. And uh, I think some of you are familiar with her name. Uh, this lady, uh, Catherine, was uh, a huge mentor and supporter uh, to Benny Hinn until she died. He got a lot of his uh, uh, teaching, a lot of his uh, shenanigans, and a lot of his... Uh, just way of ministry through what she did. Now listen, he went and went through a lot of these seminars or these healing uh, um, revivals. And he went and, and he goes on and, and he quotes and says that, uh, that even though he would sit in the back and he would see hundreds and thousands of people pour to the front of the auditorium. He said people who would come for hours ahead rolling in their own wheelchairs, either having to be pushed or pushing themselves and being wheelchair bound, he said, came with a glow on their face, with an ex expectation that maybe, just maybe, that God would heal them through this certain individual. He said, in every meeting I ever went to, he said, there's no doubt that some through God's power, were healed in, uh, with disregard to what man would say or what woman would do, but that more so, and 99% and, and of them would leave those meetings with such discouragement and devastation on their heart and brokenness that for what they came for, they didn't receive. And they, she goes on to say, William Nolan goes on to say that often he would try to approach Catherine uh, Kuhlman and, and, and that he would often wonder and try to get her to explain to him or, or, or at least talk to him that does she even sleep at night knowing that there are thousands of individuals that come for what she has promised or the only reason they have came for, they leave without any hope. He said, if those individuals that stand on the platform could sit in the back with all of them that will themselves in, they'd no longer make the claims that they cannot do. Now, this is a medical doctor who has, and, and by the way, he gave so many 
synopses and, and accounts. Uh, I, I could have brought you sheets in here and, 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 and print them out for you. Just sheets and sheets of stuff, of accounts and, and, and different things that, that he would bring to the service of, uh, of different testimonies of people who, who went to these things only to have gone back to the doctor and their case is worsened. Not better. And yet no follow-up No hope. And that's why he writes the book, Healing a Doctor in Search of a Miracle. Folks, why in the world would I bring this to your attention? Why would uh, it would be important for us to study this out? I'll tell you why. Because the body of Christ, the church age today, is being easily led astray from the truth of God's word and to teachers having itching ears. Paul said, beware. Look out for those seducers who will deceive and be deceived, who will wax worse and worse, he says. It's going to get worse, folks. Can I hear an amen? It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. And people pour their retirement money. They pour all their resources into one thread of hope that they do not understand. Hebrews 9, 27 that says, It's appointed unto man wants to die. You can fix it up, prop it up, poke it up, pump it up. It's still going to decay. It isn't going to keep you here. This isn't where we should be building our kingdom. Do you know why we give to missionaries? Do you know why I can't wait for the tailors to get get here? It's because I want to invest in things that are of eternal value, not temporal. I won't need these glasses when I get to heaven. Amen. I won't need an orthopedic uh, a little insert in my shoe. Uh, makes me about an inch taller. I feel real good about it. But I, I'm not going to need that when I get to heaven. I'm going to be running around. He'll spurn out. It don't matter. Who gives a rip about those things? I'm saying, man, if you got to fix it, do your best to help yourself. So you got to see. But I don't need to put my faith and trust in what man promises. I need this. And I need this more than I need anything. And you need it too. And folks, people come to a church like ours. And they laugh and make scoff and make mockery because we make a big deal out of the Bible. Let me tell you something. This is the only deal. It's not just a big deal. It's the only deal. God hasn't promised you anything. God hasn't promised you a life of wealth and health and prosperity. He is, hey, let me tell you something. All they that shall live godly shall suffer persecution. How about that for your promise? Sign that up this Sunday for Awana. Hey, suffer for Jesus. Go serve in Awana. That didn't make sense. Don't. All right, serve with children. Yeah, it could be. Man, I want a preacher who doesn't scream and holler. I'm sorry, I just get excited about it. I ain't because I'm mad. I'm not mad. I'm excited about it. I scream at a football game. I scream at the TV. Hey, listen. Man, now some of you, some of you have gone to concerts that are just as wicked and hellish in your past. past and uh, you'd go and you'd light that candle, you'd flick your bit, and, and you'd light that thing, and you'd burn it all night, and you'd scream till you couldn't talk in the morning. Horse. Uh, 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 in a drunken stupor, call in the next day so you don't have to go to work. But people come to church and get all quiet and ticked off at the preacher because he'll spit and snarl just to tell people to repent towards God and turn in faith to Jesus Christ. And I'm the one who should feel guilty about it? I don't think so. Man, I served Satan for 27 years. I think the rest of my life I can give God my best. Now, it may not be your best. may not be what you're happy with. But I'm going to tell you this. If you don't rightly divide God's Word and be in it and study it. Listen, 
you will buy into the next book. You'll buy into the next movement. You'll buy into the most next flashy preacher. And by the way, you want another flashy preacher, there's a hundred of them that line up behind me and come here and do it for you. You can find anybody to fill the pulpit, by the way. And listen... I ain't begging to stay, but I tell you what, I ain't begging to leave either. I want to be in a place that will uh, take God's Word, heed God's Word, learn God's Word, and leave God's Word. And what I'm telling you is, this is the place for that. Let everyone else do what they're going to do. But freedom ought to be a place where people can be free in Christ and live under Christ. Got to do it this way. Got to do it this way. So I'd like to do this program. I'd like to do this event, and I'd like to do this event. Well, when you lead it, maybe we can do it. But I'm going to tell you this. If it isn't centered around this, and if it isn't supported by this, and if it isn't exalting this, guess what? Not on the calendar. Can't do it. We're even thinking about pulling some things back for a specific reason here, only because we are, and I, I should say, am so concerned to make sure that we don't get away from anything that could be even or even close to being alleged that we aren't lining up with the Scriptures. Man, I, man, I freak out about it. I'll lose sleep over it. Did I say the right thing? Did I preach the right message? Did I give the right verse, man? Man, I can go over it and 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 over it while people leave the church and go, what was that about? I don't know. But I'm going to tell you, if you'll get in your Bible with me, if you'll get in that handout with me, I'm telling you, you will see spiritual growth in your life like you've never seen before. Not, listen, not because of me. I'll tell you that right now. I am a poor communicator. I can trip over words. I can't even make sense half the time. Not because of me, but only because at least what I know that I study and I present to you is truth from God's Word. That's all I know. That's all I know. And, 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 and I, I would be the first to stand in line and say that, you know, I'm not the brightest uh, light bulb in the package. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. But I do know this. I, I know this. And it's never changed it, 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 because it can't change. If I'll just stick with this, I can't go wrong. If we'll just stick with this. And I wish more people did. But I can't worry and be concerned about what other people do. But I do have an obligation to preach the truth, the whole counsel of God's Word, and to protect the flock. Guess what? You are the flock. I'm the shepherd. I'm the under-shepherd. Jesus Christ, by the way, the church does not belong to the community. The church belongs to Christ. Can I get an amen on that? Okay? We're not going to be the community church. We're going to be the church of Christ. That's who we are. We belong to Jesus. We're His body. We're His bride. And it's very important that we stick to His Word and nothing else. Number five. All right? Let me give you another thing as we quickly wrap this up. Here it is. Jesus and the apostles healed organic disease. That's a big word, organic. I know some of you like organic. I like organic coffee. I like organic foods. And um, this isn't that type of thing, all right? And uh, they, when Jesus and the apostles healed... They healed organic disease. Everybody say organic. Okay. They didn't just heal. Now, now look up here. They didn't just heal. By the way, this is in your handout, so you can follow it along if you want to. They didn't just heal lower back pain, uh, headaches, heart problems, arthritis, or other invisible ailments. Things you couldn't say. They didn't just... And by the way, it'd be easy for me to come up to you and tell you you're healed of something that's invisible. I could do that. I could maybe even manipulate your mind to make you think that is true and that's easily done today but they didn't just heal invisible ailments in your handout it says they healed legs crippled from birth check that out they they, they healed withered hands they healed the palsy they healed blind eyes deaf ears hey what yeah that's right i can hear now they healed people who couldn't hear they even healed leprosy Whoop, boop, boop, boop. All them bubbles, all them boils, gone. They healed organic disease. Now, uh, quickly, look at Matthew chapter 15, verse 31. 
Everybody say quickly. All right, get there. Matthew 15, 31. All right, Matthew 15, 31. The Bible says this, Matthew 15, 31. Insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to be whole, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. There is but one reason why God did what he did at this time in the age of history, and that is so all the glorification could go to himself and never to man. They glorified. They wondered, the Bible said. People were speaking who couldn't talk. People who were walking who couldn't walk. Uh, people who, who, who absolutely were, were hurting who couldn't see, now all of a sudden could see. I'm going to tell you something. Miraculous. Amazing. Everybody say amazing. Yeah, it was. Acts chapter 4. Would you go there very quickly? Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verse 16. Acts chapter 4, verse 16, the Bible says, saying, What shall we do to these men? For they indeed, for they, for that indeed, I should say, a notable miracle hath been done by them. What can we do about it? It is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we can't deny it. How can we fight this? How can we reject this? How can we even uh, uh, say anything negative about it? You can't. Because there's no denying it. That when Jesus and the apostles healed, they healed organic disease. Look at Luke chapter 22. Back up just a little bit. Luke chapter 22, look at verse 50. Luke chapter 2, verse 50. Would you do that? Luke chapter 2, verse 50. We got time. Got about five minutes. We'll do it. Did I say 2? Luke 22. I'm getting used to my glasses here. All right? Luke chapter 22, verse 50. Now, you know the story here. Uh, this is Judas' betrayal of Jesus here in the garden. And, of course, here comes Peter, right? Peter to the rescue. And they've come, the guards have come to take Jesus away. Uh, 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 Judas betrays Jesus, kisses him. They know who Jesus is. Uh, by the kiss, they could pick him out of the crowd now because Judas kissed him. And, and the Bible says, verse 50, And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. Whoop! Gone! Good old Peter. Gotta love that guy. We need that guy as a deacon or elder around here. Verse 51, and Jesus answered and said, look at this, Suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him. Man, in your hand out, Jesus took an ear that had been cut off and healed it. Man, that's some good stuff right there. Right off the ground. Here you go. What? Man, I'm telling you. Man, forget the crowd. I'm following that guy, right? That ain't happening today. Organic. Not just stuff you can't see. Man, he'll take that appendage that's been whacked off, put it right back on. Cut that toe off with a saw, finger, whoop, see Jesus, he got it. You don't see that happening today, do you? Big problem then. Look at Acts chapter 9, verse 34. Folks, you've got to do a better job getting there quicker. Acts chapter 9, verse 34. All right. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole, arise and make thy bed. And he rose immediately. You know this is the story of a boy or a man who had been lame. So in your handout, Peter healed a man who had been crippled and in bed for eight years. Eight years. Eight years. Crippled. And now up and visible and moving. Couldn't walk. Couldn't get out of bed. Peter did that. I'll, I'll tell you something interesting. This, this is really fascinating. Look at Acts chapter 13. Now, I don't know if that is in your handout, but, but look at Acts chapter 13. Is that reference there? No, but it's okay. 
You can write it down if you choose to, and uh, it'll make sense. Acts chapter 13, look at verse 8. Acts chapter 13, verse 8 through 11. But Eliamus, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, by the way, Saul is Paul, who is also called Paul, which it says, just want to make sure you clarify that, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. Boy, this is getting good. And he said, O fool of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Would you keep on reading with me? Look at verse 11. And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, Paul says, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Listen, man, Jesus and the apostles healed organic disease, but I'm going to tell you that with faith healing and apostolic healing, Paul did the reverse to a man here in Acts. And, 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 and this guy here in the text was withstanding Paul, and Paul strikes him with blindness. Can you imagine that happening at the healing services this time? Man, you go up there, and you're seeing everything's good, and you go up on stage, and whoop, now you go home blind. Man, to me, that's some miraculous miracles right there. Paul did the very opposite. I'm just saying to you tonight that if someone's going to make claims like they do from the Scriptures, they ought to line up with the Scriptures, and they ought to be tested by it. Number six, very quickly. Jesus and the apostles performed the ultimate of all healings. Guess what they did? Can you know it? They raised the dead. That's right. Would you write that in? They raised the dead. Now, you're in Acts, right? Go to Acts chapter 9. We'll kind of back up a little bit. Acts chapter 9, would you look at verse 36? Acts chapter 9. By the way, wonderful name here. You ought to name your next child this, Dorcas, all right? Good name. And I'll tell you what, the Bible, man, the Bible is so awesome, so good. But i tell you, there's some crazy names. Now, there was at Joppa, would you look at verse 36? A certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. It came to pass in those days she was sick and died. And when uh, whom they had washed, they laid her in the upper chamber. For as much as Lydda was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto two men, and desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. And Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. You know if they won't. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning him to the body, said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and she saw Peter. She sat up and gave her his hand, and and lifted her, and he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And, and when he had called, the saints and widows presented her alive. And it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And it came to pass that they tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon, a tanner. Would you look at John chapter 11 now? Go to John, the Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John chapter 11, just a couple verses here. John chapter 11, look at verse 38. Verse 38, the Bible says, Jesus therefore again groaning in himself, come to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Of course, this is the story of Lazarus. Jesus said, take away the stone, Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. And he's been there a long time for he hath been dead for four days. Jesus said unto her, said, I night unto thee, did, did I not tell you that, that if thou wouldest believe, Thou shouldst see the glory of God. Wow. Man, he, he just right to it, right to the heart of the matter. Then he took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes. Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, which stand by what I said it, and they believe that thou hast sent me. And when thou 
uh, has spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto him, Loose him and let him go. Did you notice something unique here about the common of raising the dead? Did you notice it? I'll tell you what it is. It's in your handout. Yeah, they raised the dead, but they did it in front of crowds of people. There was always somebody around. Those who claim to have the apostolic uh, uh, gift of healing are not raising people from the dead that have been dead four days as Jesus did or dead bodies that have been washed and laid in an upper chamber as Peter did. Uh, No one's doing that. And by the way, I'll just give you a little interesting quote here uh, by uh, one of the famous reporter of apostolic healing, and that's Benny Hinn. He goes on to say, um, as one who is... Uh, evidence that Hen is a charlatan, quote, from Benny Hen. He says, you're going to have people raised from the dead watching the Trinity Broadcasting Network. Benny Hen says, I see rows of caskets lining up in front of the TV set, and I see actual loved ones picking up the hands of the dead and letting them touch the screen, and people are getting raised wow by the way has it happened by the way will never happen can I get an amen there yeah Yeah, I'll tell you what people make claims that just do not line up scripture in your handout here's the conclusion we're a little bit over but we're okay We've seen from the Bible six characteristics of a true apostle's healing ministry. Despite the claims being made today, nobody's exhibiting these six characteristics, by the way. You ought to keep these. You ought to keep them handy. And you ought, you ought, you ought to let every person that makes these claims go through this test. And if a person wants to conveniently disregard these six things that are typified by the biblical sign gifts of healing, that's fine. But they shouldn't call themselves an apostle and claim to, ha- to have the sign gift of healing. That person should claim that that they're making it up and and that they're a false prophet and and that they're a false teacher. But, in your handout, why is this important to look at and study? Well, in your handout, because so many people today are living under guilt and condemnation because they did not receive their healing. Folks, that's why we study what we study. People leave churches each and every week under this heavy load of guilt and condemnation because they didn't get the miracle they were promised. Paul said, if any man preaching another gospel, let him be accursed. And I'm telling you that we as a church ought to stand up for what is truth, not our truth, not our opinions, not our doctrine, not our philosophy or, or, or polity, but I'm saying the truth of God's Word. You know, Those that are under guilt and condemnation, they are afraid that maybe they're inferior. Maybe God is mad at them. Maybe they aren't good enough. Maybe they don't have enough faith. I'm going to tell you something. That is ridiculous for teachers and preachers to make a person feel like that. It's ungodly. In your handout, another reason that we look at this and study it is because there are others who are filled with false hope and end up devastated with their faith in God being undermined. Hey, listen. I'm going to tell you why people come to church each and every week and leave with their hope diminished and their faith undermined. It's because we're not pointing them to the right hope. The God of hope. We're telling them, hey, trust us. Mm -mm. Don't trust us. Trust Jesus. Man, trust the, the God of peace, the, the, the hope of, of the world. Trust Him. 
But Christian, do not despair. Paul called this dispensation that we live in the sufferings of this present time. Paul said, though the outward man perish, yet our inward man is renewed day by day. And in your handout, we have a hope that extends far deeper than this physical healing of these corruptible mortal bodies. Thank God for that. You've got a hope beyond that flesh carcass you got attached to your skeleton. Man, let that thing fail. Hey, it's going to do it anyway. I'm saying to you, eat your vitamins, take your uh, Metamucil, whatever you got to do. But 2 Corinthians 4, 17 on the screen says, For our light affliction, affliction, what is but for a moment, woo, is worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Hang on, believer. Hang on, Christian. Hang on there, lost person. Listen, it is just for a moment. Don't set yourself up this side of eternity. I told that guy sitting in that uh, 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 rehab center. I said, the problem with you and with a lot of people who make this statement, I hope so, is that you believe that your life, however long or short it may be on this earth, is of greater value than eternity and my friend, it is not. You better be investing and putting your faith in something of eternal value and that matters eternally, not for the here and now. Not, don't set it up temporarily, but for all eternity. And I'm going to tell you something. Can you believe the day that the Bible says that we shall receive a glorified body? I won't need a faith healer. God will create me and put me into the image of His Son, finally. Spiritually, He's working on that now in you and I. But physically, that's going to match our spirit one day. Woo, isn't that good? That's good stuff right there. That'll preach. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for tonight. And God, as we close the service.